Hello and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday the 23rd of April, so happy St. George's Day. Uh, and the time has just gone 12.15 British summer time. Uh, it has been a fairly quiet start to the European session. Uh, the FTSE 100 is slightly higher. Um, we've seen a push higher in the, in the underlying oil market and metals are doing well. So the FTSE is up before being in Europe. Uh, whereas the CAC, uh, the, the CAC and the DAX are a bit are, the, are, a, bit, are a bit lower on the session, but it is worth pointing out uh, that, that the uh, the CAC racked up an 11 month high last uh, back end of last week, and the DAX managed to rack up a six month high at the back end of last week. So we're seeing the uh, the FTSE 100 uh, play catch up with its continental uh, counterparts. It was a fairly subdued session in Asia overnight. Um, there was a report stating that the Chinese government are going to more head towards structural reform rather than just you know straight up fiscal stimulus, which has been the kind of their, their go-to move anytime the economy shows sign of weakness. Uh, this is on the back of the fact that the Chinese economy, the latest GDP figures, came in a bit better than expected. Um, to be honest, it is a fairly quiet day in terms of economic indicators that are uh, um, that are expected out later on today. Uh, and overall, the over the, the week ahead is going to be much more focused on corporate earnings rather than uh, economic indicators. Uh, I'll start off now by having a look at what's going on on the major indices, starting off with the FTSE 100. So it's been, a f if you watch these videos, uh, right, really it's a fairly common theme here. We've seen the FTSE 100 continue on in a solid upward trend that has been in since uh, late 2018. As I mentioned, we've reached, recently hit multi-month highs at some of the European markets. And the FTSE is in, still continue to be producing uh, multi-month highs. So if we continue to push on higher from here on the FTSE 100, we could be looking at heading up toward this level here, uh, not seen since late September, and that take that level is in at 7,560, there thereabouts in that rough region. And if we move beyond that, uh, we could be looking up towards the psychologically important 7,600. Uh, if you have move to the downside, support copy could be found from this area in around here, uh, just shy in, in around the 7,440 mark, or perhaps even as low as, as uh, 7,000. 400 itself down around here. Uh, should we try to drop below that? This region here might act as support. It acted as both resistance and support not too long ago, and that is at 7,370. Um, buying on the dip has been a very popular strategy with uh, with you know U European and US markets in recent months. So if we do see any pullbacks, uh, we, we might see fresh buyers enter the fold. I'll take a look now over at the DAX German market. That's a fairly similar situation there. As I mentioned, uh, we had a fresh six-month high on Friday in, in Germany. It's been in a solid upward trend for the last number of months. Uh, for the time being, we've no kind of sign uh, indication that at the, at the downward, tr a, the, the recent upward trend is coming to an end. So if you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the psychologically important 12,400 or just if you go beyond that. We could be looking up to the, to the highs in mid to late September, which are, which are in around... Uh, 12,460 and if you press on higher from there we could be looking at tracking at this area here uh, which comes into play in around the 12,600 mark. If the, man, if the market does manage to drift lower support could be found from this region in around here in at uh, 12,100 or perhaps even from the kind of psychologically important 12,000 mark. It's only really if you have a size of the break below the utility moving average uh, which comes into play just south of 11,700. It's only if you have a fairly sizable break below that, could then we, could then we, um, be a bit concerned that the upward trend since late December has actually come to an end. Uh, US markets are in fairly healthy shape as, as well, starting off with the S&P 500. Granted, volatility in the US markets has been fairly low recently, but nonetheless, we have seen you know fresh multi-month highs being eked out uh, on the S&P 500 not too long ago. So you can see here, like with its European counterparts, it's in a solid upward trend since late, de since late December. Volatility has cooled off, but we're still very much in the upward trend. And if you can press on higher from here, to be honest, we're at levels not really seen since late since October last year. And keep in mind, you know, the all-time high was reached in, in late, late September, early October. So if you can press on higher from here on the S&P 500, the next area to keep an eye for will be there thereabouts at the all-time high of in around 2,940. 
If it did manage to drift a bit lower, so our support could be found from this area here in around 2880. And a drop below that could bring this re region into play at uh, 2860. We can see that act as both res uh, resistance and support not that long ago. And if a metric has been, uh, has been important in the near past, it, it makes it more likely that it will be so again in the future. Taking a look now at the Dow Jones. Similar situation whereby the Dow Jones had recently at levels not seen since October last year. And, we're, and if we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the all time high, which is in around the kind of broadly speaking uh, 26,950 region there, thereabouts. So if you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting that metric. And if you go beyond that, traders will be looking towards the psychologically important 27,000 mark. As with the SP 500 and the DAX and the FTSE, Buying on the dip has been a fairly popular strategy uh, with, with, with major European and US markets in recent months. So if we do see a, dr a drift to the downside in the uh, in the Dow Jones, we may find some, some, fresh, some fresh buyers enter the fold. So if we do drift lower from here, support can be found from this area here in around 26,278. And if you drop below that, this region here in, in around 26,000, there's a fair bit of consolidation in around 26,000. And if you, if you can note this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, we can see on a few occasions uh, in, in late March, the 50 day moving average acted nicely as a support for, on a couple of occasions. And if a market acts as support, as active support recently, it makes it more likely, more likely that it will do so in the future. And the 50 day moving average comes to play at 25,955. So we've talked about markets that are doing quite well. On the flip side of the coin now, Gold has, uh, has been under a bit of pressure recently. So the wider picture has been gold has had a fairly, de a fairly decent bounce back from August last year and really since about mid-November last year, mid-November through mid-February, it's had a very solid upward trend. But since then, uh, we've, seen a, we've seen a few uh, higher highs and higher lows. Also, we've had the US dollar uh, at levels not seen for nearly two years. There's often been an inverse relationship between the greenback and the and the and the gold market. So while we're seeing the US dollar at kind of um, well multi multi you know uh, quite double digit multi month highs, it's no surprise we're seeing a better pressure on gold. So since mid February, we've seen a kind of a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. So the lows here. Um, of April have taken off the most uh, taken off the most recent lows in January, so we're now back at levels not seen since late December uh, on the on the gold market. So if the while if the the most recent negative trend continues, we could be looking heading back down towards kind of the 1260 area here, which also been consolidation in in, uh, in in late December. And if we go below that, uh, we could be looking heading towards kind of the 1250 region. Uh, 1250 acted as a resistance on a few occasions in December, and it also kind of coincide overlaps. With the 200 day moving average so moves to the downside could be looking to take it back down towards 1250 in gold uh, but if you do manage to see a bounce higher to, uh, in, in gold we could see that we could see the uh, kind of psychologically important uh, 1300 mark come into play and if you go beyond that we could be looking at look at retesting the, uh, the mid-april high of around 1310 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at targeting this area here in a 1324 so the oil market, uh, I mentioned uh, at the top of the, uh, the video how the oil market has done well. Essentially, um, the Trump administration has put sanctions um, on Iran. So it's, it's actually penalizing, it's, it's penalizing, trying to penalize uh, Iran um, by putting sanctions on the country and kind of squeezing its, its oil exports. But um, a number of months ago, uh, the Trump administration allowed um, eight countries uh, to kind of waive th those sanctions. So countries that were continuing to, to trade with Iran in the form of oil exports was still okay. Now that that's come to an end, and President Trump is actually looking to kind of squeeze Iran and actually uh, ideally drive Iranian oil exports down to zero. So we saw oil, oil at levels not seen. Uh, well, it, well, in some cases, depending on which contract you look at, if you're looking at Brent levels not seen since November, if you're looking at WTI levels not seen since late October. So multi-month highs have been racked up on, on the oil market. The oil market has been bouncing back nicely since late December, and if the, the wider kind of bullish tr uh, trend continues here on Brent crude, we could be looking at targeting up around here, which is 75, it's about 95, and if you go beyond that, the big psychological number of 80 bucks per barrel that come into play. 
Um, if you do manage to drift lower and break through, support could be found from this area here in around 72. We can see that that, that area broadly acted as resistance a few occasions. And if, if, if even if it drops below that, support could be found from this red line here, which is the 30 moving average. And we can see that acted as support on a few occasions in early April. And that comes to play in a 69 spot 18. Take a look now at WTI, and it's a fairly similar situation in WTI. Like I said, WTI recently at a level not seen since late October last year, so multi-month highs. It's been an nice bullish trend, series of higher highs and higher lows throughout 2019. If you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting a level not seen since late uh, late October, which is in at uh, this area here in around 67 spot 80. And if you go beyond that, then it's kind of psychologically important, 70 bucks per barrel with then with commit to play. But if you do manage to drift lower, uh, support can be found from this area here in around $63 per barrel. And even if you drop below that, uh, the Trinity moving average, this red line here, acted as support on a few occasions in April, and it might act as support again. And the current and, and the Trinity moving average is currently sitting at 60, just, just shy of seven, sorry, just shy of $61 per barrel. Take a look now on the currency markets, euro sterling, sorry, euro, euro dollar rather than start with it. So euro dollar has been broadly been pushing lower um, since January this year. Obviously the, the highs in, in March managed to take the highs in February, but broadly speaking we've seen um, a fairly obvious move to the downside. Um, and, as, and more recently we can see that it's failed to kind of break above the fifth, this, this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play in around 1 spot 12, 90, 95. So if we continue to press on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting 112 and a move below 112 could take us back down towards uh, the, the early March low of it in around 1 spot 11.76 and then a move below that might bring 1 spot 11.10 into play. Uh, should we kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting 1, 1 spot 114 or the March highs in around 1 spot 14.48 or 50. And Lastly, you take a look at pound versus the US dollar. So, broadly speaking, pound dollar has been pushing higher since mid since uh, mid December. Granted, we have seen a nice kind of a series of lower highs, um, basically from mid March onwards. So, so for over a month now, we've seen a nice series of lower highs. But this Trinity moving average, this red line here, which comes into play in around the one spot twenty nine seventy region. That has acted as fairly decent support, and while we, we hold above that metric, uh, it's likely that we could see the wider upward trend that's been in play since since uh, mid December continue. Uh, if you look at the kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting kind of 132 area, so a lot of consolidation in around 132, and we could be looking at targeting in around the kind of one spot 33.85 region uh, if you continue if you, if you manage to take out 132. But if you do have a fairly big break below the attributed moving average, we could be looking to take us back down toward this area here, not seen since mid-February, in around the 1 spot, 20, 1 spot 2775 area. I'll take a look now at the week ahead. Uh, the weekend article is, is on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, you'll find, the, the, uh, you'll find this particular article and many of the other articles that myself and my analyst colleagues produce here as well. Um, looking to tomorrow, Wednesday, we have interest inter 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 rate decision from the Bank of Canada. We have full year figures from Boohoo, who are listed here in London. On Wednesday, we, we have first half figures from Associated British Foods. On Wednesday, we have Q1 figures, first quarter figures from Boeing over in the US. We have first quarter figures from Tesla in the US. On Thursday, we have the Bank of Japan interest rate decision. On Thursday, we have first quarter figures from Amazon. Uh, Thursday and Friday, we have, uh, we have updates from uh, Barclays and Royal Bank of Scotland. And uh, on Friday, we have US uh, first quarter GDP figures. And also, and also on Friday, we have first quarter figures from Deutsche Bank. Um, just also it's worth pointing out, um, if you go to, under the Market Pulse tab on a, on a trading platform, the second option down is Insights. Uh, throughout, throughout the day, myself and, and other analysts will post to the section term, in terms of economic indicators, news analysis updates. Uh, a, re a recording of this video will be found on Insights. Uh, I also want to, want to draw your attention to Chart Forum. And Chart Forum is the third option down on the Market Pulse tab. Uh, myself and my colleagues update uh, Chart Forum a number, of times, a number of times throughout the week. And anybody with a CMC Markets account is free to uh, update that. So all we do is take a, a screenshot 
of a particular chart and write a few of the words on what we think the price action is doing. Finally, uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to uh, leave a review on the reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.